the best part about this, or maybe the worst part, is that it was signed by Stan Lee. This isn't really a joke. Like, this isn't me just kind of like, man, like, this video would pop off if they knew that this was signed by Stan Lee. No, this very drawing that you see right here was signed by Stan Lee before he passed away, inevitably. This is my uh, first uh, sketchbook, first, um, what do you call it? Art class sketchbook. I, this is during, you know, we'll say the date. Yeah, 2017. This might actually be when I ended it, possibly. Maybe when I started it, most likely. Sonic Mania, yeah, of course. So I'm just gonna kind of just whiz through this and then explain stuff as I go. Maybe I react to something like this here Luffy and this here Mickey Mouse, some other class schedules. I've only done like, I think two art classes in my entire life. So, you know, just a lot of this. I'm not gonna go over every single thing. Ooh, shapes, forms. Yeah, uh, probably drew those anyways. And value and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't really even remember a ton of this. I don't remember this at all. Cause I just, when I draw, I just literally just kind of go into my headspace and do what I want to do. This is my first uh, attempt at taking an art class. Uh, a lot of what I do is just kind of self-taught and is kind of motivated through me creating characters. So this is the first time that, you know, I had to be told and directed, yeah, you have to draw in a specific way in a specific manner. Oh, here was my first, um, perspective drawing um i'm not sure if we're constantly told what to do when coloring um but for perspective shot and all that stuff it looks pretty good like i have no idea see it says vanishing point i have no idea um how much liberty i had in this process of creating these things and yes we we had this thing where we had to ugh, put newspaper uh stuff into our yeah, it's already dead. This guy, yeah, he's dead. But this was probably, yeah, it's for color. Um, this was the first time I actually learned about the color wheel, actually, in depth. Learning um, that, you know, there's, you know, blue, red, and yellow. And then you got the in-between colors, which is purple, green, and orange. I didn't know that at first. And, I mean, it's still something that I guess I kind of look at. Hey, Ariana Grande, what's going on? Oh, hey, we have some actual, like, art, like, original art, like... So basically you could draw whatever you wanted, but it had to be within these color lines. And, and I ended up drawing Maurice. This is actually his um, more classical design, or at least the design that I started with uh, having when I uh, started YouTube. Uh, when I started YouTube, Maurice started looking like this. Now he has that uh, kind of queer-esque look to him. Like, again, like I wish I can explain like the choices that I make with my characters and stuff like that. So. The way that it works is that I allow my characters to kind of look like whatever they want to look like. They're an amalgamation of everything that I've experienced, learned, and analyzed when it comes to my experience with cartoons and whatever you want to call it. So it kind of just forms into whatever they are. Rontu's always... Okay. Okay. If I explain the whole lore, then it's just going to turn into a totally different video. Either way, we have Invader Zim here. So I guess you could say that... Let me see. So this is, yeah, eventually, essentially the colors where it's orange... Uh, what do you want to call it? Um, I'm pretty sure it's just, you know, yeah, these, like, colors and stuff like that. Just basically here. And then, I guess, cool colors versus warm colors. That's the transition. That's what's going on here. So, you have my character Softy and you have Luffy. So, there's that. Oh, my God. So, sorry. Some of this art I actually haven't seen in a long time. So, I'm actually surprised because I kind of thought that these were in other sketchbooks. And I'm glad that they still have the date on them. Here you have uh, Finn the human, and you have Jake the dog, and they represent, you know, the opposite colors, orange and blue, even though Finn's got a lot more going on than just blue, but, you know, that's for a different day. Here we have, okay, so, okay, more character lore. Um, here is Haiguchi. She is my idealization of, I guess you could say, a crime-fighting hero and stuff. And she is a girl, and it's basically my first anime character. And then you have Maurice there, and I guess full color. I'm not sure what this was about. Oh, free drawing. So whatever you wanted to draw. Well, I'm always down for that, literally. Anyways, um, but yeah, and interesting. So yeah, we have uh, Ron 2 here. Uh, this is Madison back when... This is Madison and Maurice back before they actually had 
their names that I call them now, but we're, again, we're not going to get into that. Yes, it's Power for Girls aesthetics. That's actually what they used to look like back then in the past. Again, I've been drawing for a long time. Hmm. Oh, actually, it's more exciting. Centric colors, the more warmer colors. I just like drawing my characters, so. Oh, nice. Painting green. Actually, there is a candy drawing, but I don't- What the- No wonder! I was always wondering what the fudge this was. <sighs> Son, walk up straight. You've got- You've got to impress the other kids. <laughs> Walking with a damn keychain in my stomach is cool nowadays. The fudge. This is- This is just violence. What? Silver? I don't understand. What was the whole point of this? What was what was the reasoning behind this? Like, I think some of the style actually formed into another sketchbook that I have that I was creating during when I was in the art class. I'll not hesitate to show that after this, but this I would never really do anymore. It looks like a serial killer's like memoir of like I don't know, it just has stuff sticking out of it. Actually, if I was a serial killer, maybe the smart idea would not make be to make my sketchbook so um, suspicious, so sus. Um, this is interesting. Okay, probably putting in like the actual textures or something in here. Uh, interesting, I don't know why I drew Sonic. Uh, it just keeps on going. What, anime? Thickness? What? I'm so confused. Lucy from Fairy Tale? Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, that's kind of justified. Interesting stuff. Here's my little logo. You know, you guys don't probably care about that. What the fudge is that? Is that, is that a bear? It's a bear just chilling. Uh, yeah, here's my friend Tristan. We'll figure it out as we go. Um, is that... Flo from Progressive? Huh. I guess... Oh, flowing... Yeah, that's actually kind of perfect. Flowing water and flow herself. That's not bad. Yeah, we got Sonic and the main gang. Movement. That's actually pretty accurate. I have no words to express what exactly is going on here. What is this? Is this a comic? Actually, I think that this is a comic. Interesting. There's no words, obviously. It's all, um, I guess, storyboards? Okay, so... I think this is supposed to be me, or maybe it's it's just an impersonation. Okay, so me and the duck are sitting, see a girl running, I'm like falling in love, duck's like whatever, but duck's like, I got an idea, dude, you should do this, and you should try and run and chase after her and try and get her, and then, I don't know, I guess I ended up dying on the way there, and then there's another dude, and then, I don't know, like, what else is happening here, there's no dialogue wait she falls for this dude dude i'm crying dude they got a bunny dude uh, uh me and the duck are angry at him. what else happens i'm whispering to the duck okay and the duck starts pecking the guy on the head okay and then <laughs> the duck dies or something and then the girl's like oh the rabbit and then the guy's like mad and then the guy gets arrested for killing a bunny yo was that my plan this whole time oh she's crying and i'm like oh i'm here to swoop in and, and get you girl and then the, uh, the fuck the girl is like, dude, I already know what you did. And why starts confessing? Whoa, what what what's going on? Oh no, she's like, oh no, I'm after my boo, dude. And then the duck is like, bro, like what's going on? And then I guess I go over there. Wait, take me instead. No, you, you didn't kill. <laughs> Yo, what? And so then he's like, what? And then wait, what? This guy is mad. Why is he mad? And the guy, he's tipping his hat off. Like you guys have a nice day. The girl's crying. All right, and I'm like this and then what what did she say you have to live with this for uh for for life what what oh okay so she does know and the guy's chilling in the back and then what space invaders huh the town blows up what and then what and then huh she runs towards it what the fudge bunny and me just i don't know it just there's no there's no more that's it certainly was filled with a whole bunch of stuff Oh, and I think this is what the characters actually entirely were supposed to look like. And I just did weird mock-ups on them. Uh, yeah, sure. I have a giant anti-Semitic Jewish nose. Sure. And here's the girl. Uh, the guy's got some stuff going on. This is the new black. Dang, here's a, here's an amalgamation of everything that I'd already put to, yeah, it's everything. It's literally the whole thing. It's just redrawn. Forget it. 
I'm done. I'm not working on this sketchbook anymore. I got better fish to fry. Speaking of better fish to fry, you like that effect? I learned that from a certain other creator. Um, yeah, so this is the sketchbook I was working on during, you know, this art class period. Um, so let's just see what I'm able to do on my own sense of freedom. And this used to work, but it doesn't work anymore. I need to get batteries for it. But it was something I attached to it. And here's uh, this. I don't know what this is. Oh, well, it's supposed to be a bookmark in a sense. That's really what it is. If you're wondering why there's so much duct tape on this thing, sketchbooks. Let me bring this to the center. Sketchbooks though go through a lot of uh, trauma, especially depending on how long you've been drawing in it. Uh, and especially when you keep them in your backpack. I'm playing sports and doing everything in high school, so, you know, a lot of my sketchbooks, they'll end up getting torn throughout the way. It's not a big deal. It never becomes a bigger deal, uh, unless you got a sketchbook like mine that I already showed where I'm basically working for like two years and it just it looks god-awful. As long as the art inside is good, then it's okay. Um, but for relative, the bottom is actually pretty clean compared to the one I showed you in my other video. Uh, link in the description, maybe. But either way, here we have like the front, and I hardly ever really draw anything on the front. Sometimes I get an opportunity, and this is one of the few where I actually started putting stickers on it. So this is from Bla Baylina Production. That's another thing. You don't need to know about it. 2017. Let's freaking go. And also, if you want to know, this one, I had actually already made a video showing this off, but you guys wouldn't really know where that is. Um, but this is also when I started entering into art block, like not knowing what to draw, what to get inspired by. I never have that problem anymore, but I did at a time. Either way, we have Sonic and Tails. How nice. I can barely move this. Eh. Okay, there's that. Either way, the artist for Deadpool, Scott Coblish, actually drew Haiguchi. You guys don't even know who she is. You guys don't know any of my characters. It sucks when I say this. Maybe in the future, this will be like an interesting expectation of like, whoa, so this was what everything was like. Just essentially like me just throwing out ideas, throwing caution to the wind, just drawing whatever interests me, literally whatever is going on in my subconscious. And as you can see, there's a lot of Haiguchi. Um, and here's actually some Chun-Li. Nice. Men's is starting to take into full effect. Here's, um, you know, here we have uh, Cami White from Street Fighter, and there was a pencil version that was on this day, and then during art class, maybe during art class, I know there's a huge, bigger version that's actually painted, but the, or, you know, the more uh, outlined and all that stuff version of it took place here. And, um, yeah, she's got a body. Enough of that. Either way, we also have this drawing in itself. This one is like, you know, it's like a happy birthday for my father at the time. And uh, what do you call it? Here you have all my characters. I literally spent like, I think I can actually remember, well, you know, five hours kind of coloring it, but then, you know, the other hours is like actually making the drawing. And with that being said, the best part about this, or maybe the worst part, is that it was signed by Stan Lee. This isn't really a joke. Like, this isn't me just kind of like, man, like, this video would pop off if they knew that this was signed by Stan Lee. No, this very drawing that you see right here was signed by Stan Lee before he passed away, inevitably. And, you know, I wanted him to sign a poster of mine. I'm sorry that we have to bring so much significance to this, but this is, like, a story. And, um... You know, I had this originally outside of the sketchbook, but then, like, my dad was all like, no, you paid, like, $500 to get the signature, so put it somewhere nice. So I put it back in my sketchbook, and here it is. I don't know if it would actually, quote-unquote, sell, but, hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, when I met Stan Lee, uh, it wasn't anything big because I'm just one out of a million people who's going to shake his hand and meet him. But, you know, he noticed my art and, you know, he noticed my character and stuff. He was an old guy. He was just wrinkly. But overall, he did hold himself together very well. And uh, he, he liked the art that I had made. So, I mean, it's weird. I mean, who knows? I don't... It's weird. Like, is it like a situation where it's like legend passing beyond another legend? I don't really think of myself as such. I kind of just view myself as somebody who just... 
I don't know, like, I'm as regular of an artist as anybody is. I kind of view myself as a mindless dinosaur that just exists amongst a bunch of other dinosaurs, and I do my thing, and then once I die, people just look at my bones and say, hey, like, metaphorically speaking, uh, you know, look at the bones on this creature, like, it lived, so... I don't really view myself as some kind of artistic master or anything like that. I kind of just view myself as a normal, everyday person that just does things. And it just so happens to be capable of being seen, I guess. But here's Sonic. This is him before he gets his blue powers, you know, his speed powers. This is him when he's at his highest point of speed powers where all of his quills are combined. And here's Sonic when he's normally just blue. Yes, it's inspired from. Here's some more finished pieces of art. Here's Bendy and the Ink Machine. Uh, this video got really nice views at the time, but he's basically trying to steal Rontu's colors. Here you have this weird sunset with Shadow in the background walking across, and then here's Sonic and Tails. Um, never new perspective when drawing that, just drew it. And then you have uh, this right here where I'm just, I have a bunch of colors and it's interesting because these are the Copics and this is like the more extended amount of colors that I could use. Um, so hopefully you guys don't think that I'm like bullcrapping when I say this. A lot of stuff just in here's Madison before, you know, like, yeah, she like, it's like my characters go from periods of being developed and non-developed, like at some points they're kids and then some points they're adults and it's kind of like an in-between it's just depending on whatever I feel like design worthiness. But yeah, back then Madison was just such a pure girl, but now she is just something different. She just is. Like, look, this is more her personality now. She's just more relaxed and kind of mellow. I don't know. She's like, she seems like she's more starred than anyone. Here's Higuchi once again. And, oh, whoa, giant monster okay but yeah so this is what i'm able to do with my own freedom and a lot of it is just whatever you know like this is literally the process that i was talking about where it's like you make a bunch of ugly drawings or test projects and stuff and then it'll inevitably work itself to like finish projects or projects that have more oomph put into them either way this is after meeting tyson hess and i got very inspired from his sonic media stuff yeah so i was doing a lot i guess at age 17 and this is uh, basically Copic art, but taken to its mere max. I never feel it in so intensely, but this one I actually did. And I did it for Rontu, Sonic, and Tails. And I mean, it just looks kind of outstanding to some extent. It almost looks almost unreal, but in a weird stylistic shadowy approach. Not bad, not bad. Okay, cool. More redesigning Hygogy. Yeah, I all redesign my characters a hundred bunch, and, uh... Oh, man. Can I talk... Can I talk about the personal stuff? Is it even a time to talk about personal stuff? I think this person probably doesn't even watch my videos, so I probably should be okay about this. This is, uh... This is my first girlfriend. Yeah. And that was such an awkward experience because it's your first everything and it's just like nobody knows what they're doing Whoa, let's just let's just bye bye jamila one day not today maybe in a story time video anyways more faces yeah i draw a lot of faces for years um, it keeps going. I'm gonna practice. There's some pretty interesting art in here, I'm pretty sure. Here's um, some Higuchi. Hoping that this doesn't become too much, just me talking about my characters and me just talking about the very things that I have in here. Maybe you can learn some art techniques from whatever I have. Uh, hopefully the, fuck, <laughs> the camera doesn't roll out. But either way, we got some interesting stuff. I was trying to do a One Piece style, of course. Uh, mixed with my style, actually. And this is just an interesting monkey. Like, it doesn't look like a monkey. But it does look like a monkey. The monkey chain, the monkey's fist, the monkey, <laughs> the monkey. Um, yeah, I think I was actually trying to make a little story here or something, but it never turned into anything. This is before I started having my iPad and making things digital. But not bad, not bad at all. Just keep going. Yeah, girl with big boots. Yeah, all right, cool. Oh, well, yeah, here's the main gang, but even with that, this, I actually remember the time that I was drawing this. I was in San Diego, and I was just talking to one of my girlfriends at the time, and I don't know, it was just, it was just 
different. I don't know. It, it's just weird because I was like in a hotel and stuff. I just remember every moment about it. But it's probably because I was talking to one of my girls, so it is what it is. It depends on this. I don't remember when. Uh, okay, this is kind of cool. I don't know. Ron and Madison arguing about something, but where they're going to go. This was going to be a finished piece, but I just didn't finish it. Which is actually very rare, but we won't talk or discuss any more of it. Let's just keep going. Stuff. Ah, interesting. Not going to dwell too much on this one, but this actually did become a digital piece. I think it was around here that I ended up making digital art on an iPad versus, you know, the computer. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Mm, a lot of pointless art. Here's some line art. So that's an interesting thing about the sketchbook. There are some drawings where I just kind of keep it not colored. This is a rarity because this doesn't happen often. In fact, I mean, even to this day, it doesn't really... Me sketching in a sketchbook and at the very most lining it up, lastly actually coloring it, hasn't happened since 2019. So all this is actually interesting, not gonna lie. A lot of interesting things. A uh, nice perspective, I guess. Uh, I don't know. More Rantu, Madison, Maurice, and Haiguchi. It's just interesting. A lot of other drawings. It just keeps on going. Like, there's no stopping. Oh, cool. I have everybody. So here's Mr. Plover Jack, which is basically my avatar. Here's Haiguchi, my first anime character. Here's Rantu. Here's Madison. And... What the fudge? No. Where's Maurice? Oh, here's Maurice. And he's got that Simpsons mouth. And then you have Shravan. That's that's a that's a friend. They, you know, you just don't you just draw your friends. And here's the Wendy's girl from <laughs> from Wendy's. Yes, I, I had an obsession with that. Here's Softy. And that's pretty much okay. Alright. Oh, interesting. This is the Baylina Production uh YouTube video. That was a drawing video and yeah, I won, I won. I was one of the three winners of the contest. That's where I got the uh, sticker at the very beginning from. So that's not bad. And yeah, gotta speed through this. Oh, interesting. A bunch of the uh, Sally Acorn and Set AM series characters. Not bad. Dang, I really don't draw Sonic that much. Not as much as I used to. Oh, cool. Here's a nice drawing of Aikuchi. If you wonder why the girl does not have boobs. That will be for a later date. Maybe uh, some unmarveling video of my characters. Uh, maybe by the time that, you know, Rontu turns 20. Uh, but yeah, here's Stan Lee. Cool. Here's a, an actual colored version of Haiguchi. Amazing. Feels like forever since we actually saw a colored version of anything really in this sketchbook. You can see I'm being more lenient about how much I color my drawings. Just depends on if I actually, you know, actually feel like doing it cool that became a digital piece not bad not bad there's a lot of cool stuff in here but it's just not finished here's hi Gucci. cool there's the rest of them here's the wendy's girl not bad you're sonic saying come to me i don't know it's, it's strange okay and then we have a bunch of weird stuff i don't really know Oh, yeah, this became an, uh, oh, I don't really know if I, if I say it, then will it even make sense? <laughs> Music of non-copyrighted origin, or copyright origin, but twisted up a bit, remixed, if you will. Um, and I would just take a picture of my artwork. And there was a time, let me tell you for all the other people that really want to, like, just get your characters out there and stuff, there was a time when I thought that if you took a picture of your art piece, it wouldn't be as good as actually putting it to a scanner and having your photo scanned and then done in some official way. But I've come so far to the point where I'm just kind of like, no, it is quality if you take a picture of it. It's quality regardless. Like, that's kind of like literally the kind of habit that I had to break out of. The habit is specifically not thinking that your art is good enough to just be shown on the internet in any kind of form. Like, as long as you just do it and you do it a couple times and you change things up, it's not gonna be bad. It's not gonna be the end of the world. If you actually view my uh, comic, or at least the movie that I'm gonna probably end up releasing on this channel, uh, this is like a drawing that was also in there, but this is basically a dreamed up version where Rontu has become like a soda man, like maybe a Pepsi or Coca-Cola. 
uh, maybe Coca-Cola. But basically, he's like in a candy world, and Maurice has like an obsession with candy, and Madison is flying him. And then you have this weird horse thing that I've drawn before. It's an interesting thing. And then also, too, here's an actually accurate version of how Luffy should look. Don't really do that that often. This sketchbook just keeps on going, man. It just keeps on going. Oh, okay, cool. We have some interesting stuff with some interesting stories to tell. This, I created this in language arts class. No other further detail, but yeah. Um, one of the weirdest things, I'm not gonna lie, is that you know you draw an attractive girl and it's fun, but it's quite literally a case where after drawing it, you're not exactly attracted to it anymore. Well, even then, you were never attracted to it. It's a weird balance. Like, so basically, it's like, the very thing that you draw is like an extension of yourself. So it's kind of like, it's just hard to, I don't know, maybe it might be different for other people, but it just happens for me. Either way, this is a nice drawing, and she has a really nice outfit. It is what it is. And here we have this interesting drawing. Uh, I mean, there's always a reason for why there's so much little hyper detail within what I do. I don't know. Does this look like it has a lot of detail? Maybe not to you guys. But either way, and yeah, you are not supposed to basically view what's going on at the bottom, basically. That's where it cuts off. But uh, yeah, just a lot of uh, traumatic things end up happening. And so this is just every time when I look at an art piece, it's always like, it's just weird when there are certain things that I do remember after drawing a thing. So I guess specifically on this day, just trauma. That's all I will say, just trauma. This became a dream video. No, oh, cool. Oh wait, what's a nothing? Cool, cool. This keeps on going. There's nothing really more interesting going on. Oh, cool. More Higuchi. Okay. Yeah, see, it's all a bunch of regular stuff. I'm not sure when a lot of this was. Oh, definitely know I was designing this character during the time I was in art class. I think my friend Tristan wanted her as a drawing for like five bucks. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Oh, shoot. <sighs> Jamila, you're haunting me for the rest of my life, aren't you? What the? Oh. Okay, interesting. I never gave him the real one. I gave him a print of it. I'm such a selfish person, because I wanted, basically he wanted her as a, you know, in a JoJo pose, like, why not, you know? So that's what I ended up making. And uh, yeah, tell me how you guys like that in the comments below. <laughs> not bad, cool. Actually, really cool, skeleton. Cool, cool, cool. It just keeps on going. Oh, that used to be my profile picture at one point. Uh, interesting. A bunch of characters doing their own, you know, thingies, their poses. Oh, this is interesting. Man. <sighs> Things really don't change, do they? Jeez Louise. What do I say here? I thought December 11th was the coldest month of the year. Ooh, more like day. My markers seem to be fading. Ah, keep on fighting. I'm not ready to die just yet. There's still too much in this world that I have yet to see. So that's why I don't stop drawing. Because I get older. I... What? I would get older if I stopped drawing. And that's a little typo there, but we'll fix it later. So I keep drawing. Yeah, and then all my characters are doing their thing. Yeah, I kind of have to literally be my own cheerleader, in a sense, because, yo, know, it just it is a lot of story back in high school and stuff, and I mean, it's still ongoing, and uh, I'm kind of numb to, like, literally everything in life. And, oh, interesting. There's actually a finished design of the characters from the comic, and, um, what's Cuddles doing here? Oh, I'm sorry, Bonky? Back? Benny? Bike? What the heck does that say? Bites? Not righteous, but bites? What the heck? Yeah, stories, you know? Like, why is he so fucking big? Alright, whatever. Oh, some math? Did you guys want to do some math? That's the kind of channel this is now. We're going to become a math channel. With that being said, that it concludes 
this whole thing. 